Hey, how's it going on guys? So in this video, we'll discuss about this problem. Find all enneagrams in a string. Given a string S and a non-empty string P, find all the start indices of P's enneagrams in S. Strings consist of lowercase English letters only and the length of both the strings S and P will not be larger than 20, 100. The order of output does not matter. So let us see how we can solve this problem. So the first question that comes to our mind is what is an anagram? So anagrams and permutations, these two words can be used interchangeably. So for ABC, we have these all the permutations of ABC and these all are the anagrams of ABC. Now let us consider this example S. So for this example, the output being 0, 6. So the explanation being the substring with start index 0 is CBA. So if you see the substring is CBA and CBA is an anagram of ABC. As you can see over here, CBA is an anagram of ABC. Next sub next is the 6. So as you can see the substring at 6 is BAC. Again BAC over here is an anagram of ABC that's why 6 is in the output list. So the algorithm to solve this problem is written over here so you can just pause the video and read it once. Now we are going to solve this problem using an approach called sliding window approach. Now what is the sliding window approach is? First we will create a window of size equal to the length of P which is 3. So we will first consider this substring. We will check whether this is an anagram of ABC or not. Correct. After this, what we will do is we will just slide the window by one. Now, if you see carefully, we have included one new character E and we have removed one character C. So we have to include the contribution of this character and we have to remove the contribution of this character. And then you have to check whether this string is an anagram of ABC or not. And so on, the window will move on. Now, what we are going to do in this problem is we are going to maintain an array called count array. Now, the count array will be of size 26 count of 0 will correspond to the count of A character, count of 1 will correspond to the count of B character and so on. Now what we are going to do is, so we have this count array and we are given these two strings. So we will simply iterate over the length of P and for each character in P we will decrement the count array by 1 and for each character in S we will increment the counter by 1. So let us see uh, this, uh, let us just debug this thing. So initially the count array consists of all zeros. Now I've already mentioned that the count array will consist of 26 size. Now just for the convenience, I have just mentioned it over here in size of five because there is no character from F to Z in these two strings. Correct. So the count for all these characters will remain zero. So now I become zero, the current character being C over here and A over here. So we will just increment the count of C by one. So zero move to one and the count of character A will decrement by 1. So from 0, we will move to minus 1. Next, I will increment by 1. So the character B for this, the count will increment by 1. So from uh, 0, we will move to 1. But as you can see, the character over here is also B. So we'll decrement the count by 1. So the B will increment to 1 and then decrement to 1. So it will remain 0. Next, I equals to the count of character a will increment by one so from minus one we will move to zero and for character c the count will decrement by one so we will move to zero as you can see the string p is completely reversed and at this point the count array is completely zero what does this mean this means that we have found one anagram think about it why i'm why i'm saying this why i'm saying this is because for this part of the substring the count of each character is zero. The net count is zero because we were decrementing it for P and we were incrementing it for C. The net count becomes zero. It means that bingo, we have found one anagram. Now, up till now, we haven't applied the sliding window approach. Now we are going to apply the sliding window approach on the string S. Now for the next index three, you can see the sliding window being this, the window being this. So we, so I have said it already. I'll insert the contribution of this new character E and I'll remove the contribution of this character C. So the count of character E will increment by one from zero. I'll move to one and the count of character C will decrement by one because we are removing its contribution. So from C we'll move to minus one. Here we will check whether all are zeros or not. As you can see, all are not zeros. So we haven't found any anagram. Next, we will move one more time. So the character being B and B over here. So we'll just in increment the count of character B by one and then decrement it by one. So that it remains from zero to zero. So over here, note all are zeros. So we haven't found an anagram. Again, we will move by one. As you can see, both the characters are A. So we will in 
increment the count of a by one and then decrement it by one so the count remains same so from here we will do move over here for the next the character b will increment the count of character by one that is from zero we will move to one and for e we will decrement the counter so from one we will move to zero for next you can see for a i'll increment the counter from zero to one for b i'll decrement the counter from one to zero for next for c i'll increment the counter by one so from minus one we will reach over here zero and for a from one i'll reach over here and now you can see all our zeros what this means we have found one more diagram so bingo we have found one more diagram and so on so let me just write the code for this algorithm and then things will be more clear okay so what i'm going to do is first of all uh let's say m is equals to s dot length and n equals p dot length first we will check whether n is greater than m or not in case it is we can simply return a new array list correct the size of the pattern is more than s then there cannot be any anagram in s correct after this what we are going to do is we are going to maintain a count array of size 26 and we are going to iterate over the p so for int i equals 0 i less than n i plus plus I have already mentioned for s I am going to increment the counter by 1 and for p I will decrement it by 1 so I will just copy paste this only and this will decrement ok now what we will do is we will now iterate over the rest of the string of s so for int i equals n i less than m i plus plus here we will check are all zeros if the count array consists of all zeros we have found one anagram correct so in case it is so we'll just let me just mention a list over here as well list of integer list equals new array list so in case we have so what we will do is we will add the starting point of that substring so that will be equals to i minus n correct now over here what we have to do is we have to so here we are we are applying the sliding window approach so in the sliding window approach as you can as you know that the window is shifted by one so we have to remove the contribution of this character and we have to include the contribution of this character so what we will do is in count array for the current character we will in we will include its contribution and what we will do is over here we will do i minus n minus minus so we have include the contribution of this character and we have removed the contribution of this character correct so i guess one more thing after the for loop is over we have to check this thing one more time so i'll just write if r all zeros for count array i'll simply add m minus because the value of i will be m we will be out of this loop right so we have to do it one more time and after this is over we can simply return the list now let me add this function as well are all zeros so this will return a boolean value and this will take the count array so this is very simple so as the size is 26 so we will iterate over the size now we will check if count of i not equals to 0 we can simply return a false from here and after this loop we can simply return a true from here so everything seems fine so let me just run this code once 
okay so we have array index out of bound okay uh, i actually forgot to do this thing since the size of the array is 26 and uh, for the character a we will be storing its count at count of error zero that's why we have to decrement it by a and similarly for b we will store the count at index one and so on so now let me just run it again so it's giving the correct result let me submit the solution so it got accepted so i guess that's it from the video in case you have learned anything from the video you can hit that like button and in order to support my work you can consider subscribing to my channel thank you all